Welcome back to my channel. Yeah, in this week's video, we will have a closer look at the AMD K5 CPU. But what is the K5 exactly and how does it perform compared to Intel Pentium CPUs? The K5 CPU is quite uncommon because most retro builders they are using the much more powerful K6 CPU. The AMD K5 uh, is the first x86 processor to be developed entirely in-house. Introduced in March 1996, its primary competition was Intel's Pentium microprocessor. The K5 was an ambitious design closer to a Pentium Pro than a Pentium regarding technical solutions and internal architecture. However, the final product was closer to the Pentium regarding performance, although faster clock-for-clock -clock compared to the Pentium. Yeah, the AMD K5 was based upon an internally high parallel 29K RISC processor architecture with an x86 decoding front end. The K5 could offer very good x86 compatibility. All models had 4.3 million transistors with 5 integer units that could process in instructions out of order and one floating point unit. The branch target buffer was four times the size of the Pentiums and register renaming helped overcome register dependencies. Yeah, but the K5 was late to market and did not meet performance expectations and it never gained the acceptance among large computer manufacturers that the AMD 486 and the AMD K6 enjoyed. There were two revisions of the K5 architecture. Internally called the first was the SS. A5, available in ceramic package and two different labelings. And the 5K86 or just K5 second generation, uh, which comes in a ceramic package and a gold heat spreader. Yeah, the original uh, set of SSA5 CPUs had its branch prediction units disabled and additional internally weight states added. Yeah, these issues were remedied with the 5K86 uh, or K5 second generation, resulting in up to 30% better performance clock for clock. The SSA5 line ran from 75 to 100 MHz. And the K5 second generation line ran from 90 MHz to 133 MHz. However, AMD used what it called PR rating or performance rating to label the chips according to their suggested equivalence in integer performance to a Pentium of that clock speed. The yeah, following clock uh, rates were available for the second generation K5. The clock rate 90 MHz, which is then um, called PR120, 100 MHz, which is the PR133, 105 MHz as the PR150, and 116.6 MHz as the PR166. There is also a 133 MHz version existing, or the PR200, but the PR200 is, by the way, extremely rare and hard to find, uh, and I also don't have one in my collection here. Ok, then let's move to our benchmarks. I will choose the K5PR133, which has a clock speed of 100 MHz. And we have two things here to consider for our comparison, the technical and the commercial point of view. Yeah, technically, I want to compare same clock speeds to see which architecture is really better performing at the same speed. Here I expect the AMD with its 100 MHz clock to beat the Pentium 100. This is what AMD tells us here with this rating, that with 100 MHz the CPU has a performance of a 133 MHz Pentium CPU. And then we will perform also the same benchmarks on a Pentium 133, where we should expect somehow then the same results as on the AMD CPU. I am already very curious if this is really the case at the end. Coming now to the board I will use for the tests here. The Asus HX97 with the very well developed and high performing HX chipset from Intel. This is a very reliable board and the chipset provides a very fast memory interface. This board is good for any socket 7 CPUs from 75 to 233 MHz at a maximum front side speed of 66 MHz. It supports Intel and AMD CPUs as well as the Xerix 6x86. 
512 kilobytes of level 2 cache, all needed I.O. boards, 4 PCI slots and 4 ISA slots are completing this board to a perfect DOS gaming setup. For video, I will use the ET6000 card, which has 4 MB of video memory and it's actually a very powerful card for those gaming. Very strange is that for some reasons with this card I get always the best results in Doom and only in Doom. Crazy, seems this card is coming from hell on earth. Then let's boot our setup now. The BIOS is showing us here the right CPU, the AMD K5 PR133. Yeah, and first we start with Bitsys. It is recognizing also the K5 PR133 clocked at 100 MHz. We get here a CPU score of 104.83, but at the memory benchmark we can see some really strange behavior. At the level 1 cache we can see a not equal bandwidth. It is going for some reasons up and down which I have never seen at the benchmark of any CPU so far. Here also a closer look at the curves. On the right side we can see the Pentium where we have a flat line compared to the AMD. Really strange. Maybe this is a kind of full buffer due to the x86 decoding front end or whatever. I have no idea. Let me know in the comments what you think about. Interesting is also that the AMD is faster reading, while the Pentium is faster writing. Then let's have a look at the chart and comparisons of all CPUs. For some reasons the AMD got the highest CPU score, which I can't explain at the end. Level 1, level 2 and memory bandwidth, the Pentium 133 takes clearly the lead. At the level 2 cache and memory, the AMD and the Pentium 100 are almost the same, while the AMD is faster at level 1 speed compared to the Pentium 100. At Dr. Hart we can get a clearer picture about the CPU performance. While the AMD is taking the lead at integer performance, the Pentium 100 can convince here with its strong floating point unit. Also interesting is a benchmark of the video memory bandwidth. The Pentium 100 can handle the video card at 32-bit operations much better than the AMD. We have here a huge gap of more than 20 megabytes per second between them. If we look at the chart, we can get an interesting outcome. At integer performance the AMD is 5% better than the Pentium 100, but the Pentium 133 is taking massive delete again. So what's about now this performance rating which is printed on the AMD? So what? For sure not comparable with the Pentium 133. At floating point units the AMD is a big loser again here and has no chance against Intel's excellent Pentium design. At the end also the performance gap on the video card I mentioned already. At fracked int we can also nicely see how the Pentium 100 is taking advantage of its design. At calculating this fractal image the Pentium could finish the picture in 9.28 seconds, while the AMD K5 with a PR133 rating takes 14.5 seconds. But with gaming and 3D benchmarks we come now to the more realistic tests. Although the AMD has the weakest floating point unit it is not so bad performing with Quake 1 at 320 to 200. The game is absolutely playable with the AMD and could score here at the end 26.1 frames. But at Doom we released the devil out of the AMD. It is flying through the benchmark like hell and could score here 77 frames. Unbelievable. Also at PC player at 640 to 480 the AMD tried to shine here with 14.9 frames. If we look at the charts we get somehow the same ratios as before. At 3D bench the Pentium 100 was 10 frames slower than the AMD, while the Pentium 133 was 10 frames faster. A similar ratio we can see at Chris 3D bench and PC player. Interesting is that at Doom the AMD took the lead and was a bit faster than the Pentium 133. And this was the only benchmark where the AMD could reach a PR133 performance. Maybe AMD was referring this PR133 rating to Doom. <laughs> Who
who knows. At Quake we got also a clear picture influenced by the floating point unit, AMD the slowest and the Pentium 133 the fastest. If we summarize the useful benchmarks, we can see that the Pentium 100 is in average 6% lower in performance and the Pentium 133 16% faster than the AMD, of course in average. If you need a Doom Hell computer, you should go for the AMD CPU here. Floating point unit intensive software should get handled by an Intel CPU. I think the motivation in the 90s to buy an AMD was because they were much cheaper than a Pentium processor and beside the interesting RISC technology which is used inside, I can't find any other benefits of this AMD CPU. For me this was an interesting investigation, cause I never tested any K5 until today so far. I hope you liked the video and please subscribe and leave me some comments below. You can also follow me now on Twitter. I'm posting there from time to time interesting stuff as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.